it was a fun cruise. Like we would just go from Bastille, which is on the other side of town, and we would just ride, you know, all along the Seine, come skate that spot, then go skate that spot, then go skate the museum. And like in the day, you just went through the whole city. This is Rue des Saint-Père. It's a cool spot we used to hang out, like back then when they didn't put those bars. It used to be just manual pads. You go from the top and you just go down. You don't even have to push, you know? Just like manual, trick, manual, trick, and then the ledge at the end. Do the other guys like the ski here? No, not, you see, it's like no one now. Because you gotta have a little pop to just, you know, skate the thing. dead now. You know? So bad because it's like in the middle of Paris it was a cool hangout spot you know and you're in a nice neighborhood. This is actually like a medical university. Dope girls too coming out. It's pretty funny. Parisian girls like skaters? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like Joseph though. <laughs> I don't think it's nice to pick up girl with the, the line hey I skate. <laughs> It's just like a hobby here, you know, you skate, that's a hobby, that's it, you know. Maybe like 10 people here in France live out of skating, but the rest is just for fun, you know. On va aller manger au Subway? Non, mais tu vois, c'est bien, je pense. On arrive et tout, il y a le gars du Subway, ça va et tout. He always picks on me for not like skating around and just, you know, sticking at Bercy or... And I'm like, yo, when I was your age, like me and my friends, we used to just skate all around the city, like cruising, like finding new spots. I'm older now, you know, I'm like 10 years older than him. And if I go out for skating, it's like I got two hours, so I'm just gonna go to a spot, meet up with the boys and just skate, you know. He's always like, yo, let's go cruise. And I'm like, I did that, you know. We did that. Samir, viens on le vol. He's always like, hey, oh, you used to skate there. Did you skate there? Like, yeah. Vous avez jamais vu qu'il y avait des marches là? Ça va, ouais, tu descends par là chaque fois. Il y a les petits trucs blancs. He always skates with different people, you know, like anyone is in town, he, he would go skate with himself. So. That's what's cool with him. We need for the right reason. We're in Bastille right now. Bastille is like center of the city. It's my center of the city. That's where I grew up. I like I grew up like a block from here and you know, it's like it's really like my neighborhood here. I fait du skate depuis 20 ans. J'ai commencé le skate ici dans ce quartier sur ce spot. On skatait ici pendant de nombreuses années, de nombreuses heures. Now it became actually one real spot here in Paris because it was one of the first like ledge spots we really have downtown, you know. Who were the first pros that you saw skate here? I think the first one is like these guys from Mad Circle, Scott Johnston, René Matissen, and I think Rob Cargan was there too. I was like going out of school and every night after school I would meet up my friends here. And I think I show up early, like around five or something, and I'm just here alone with those guys and they're skating. It was just crazy. And then one day, they put those anti-skate things to keep us away from here. I've never skated here before, in fact, because this spot, I've always known how to skate. Have you ever skated here or not? Yes, yes, I've always skated here, it's clear, but... There's a lot to skate, like those little gaps, those ledge, little manual pad right there. It's a generation thing, you know, it's like there's always a new spot, new group of people, then it's going to be the next one and then... So we're just at that time, you know, that timing, it was us getting here. Whoa! There's a lot of memories when I come here, like, just remember a lot of things, like, just the people that skate here with us, the stories that happened to us, you know. One day, one guy just, like, shot himself right there. We're, like, trying to go to the phone and try to call the police and stuff, and the guy is just, he missed himself, you know, he's just on the floor like that, and we've blood, a little bit of blood.
Saint-Germain, Odéon. So where I live, the train, the train station is just in my in front of my house. So I just have to walk for 20 seconds, take the train, and I am in the center of Paris. And Did you tell your parents the first time you were going to skate here? No, I didn't tell us because they was afraid about that. Uh, because I was young and alone, uh, very far from the house, so they don't really like it. So the first time I went with a couple of friends and we skate the city. Yeah, that's what skating is all about, right? Like pushing the limit. Like you're, everyone's like, yeah, don't go further than this. And I remember the first time we went to Bercy, it was such like expedition for us. Like, like my mom was like, never go there. I think a lot of people from Europe come here to just film lines because it looks good, you know, in that video, you know, it's a it's now nice, it's a famous spot, so you know, people are like, all right, I had a line at that Bercy spot, or I jumped on the floor. The Maybe field. it's the most most easy spot to find because it's easy to find too. The subway stop is right there. Yeah. You go, and then it's it. You see the skaters, and you're right there. You know, ledges all around. This gap for the people that want to jump or die. We didn't start skating that till like the mid '90s. I remember like. Really, when we came here and put the wax, the first wax on this ledge, because before skating was just like a little ledge, little curve, just trying to hold it. Then you know, by the end of the 90s, it was like skating was a lot of like ledge, so it became like a paradise for us. We'd come here every day, stay here all day, all night. filming for a video like in 95 or something, we just came here and just tried to switch front side it and just broke my ankle on it. I never skated that thing again. Alors, ce qui est horrible avec ce spot, premièrement, vu qu'on est dimanche, il y a 40 000 personnes qui traversent sur le trottoir qui est bien large et de l'autre côté, il n'y a personne. Donc tous les gens sont sur le trottoir, il faut se la lomer partout. Deuxièmement, l'élan est un peu en descente et la rue, elle est de travers, du coup, on ne peut pas sauter tout droit. Et sinon, ça va. But it's true that it's a spot that was super fun, but at the end, it's a little bit dirty. Go, go, go! Jump! <laughs> I think like some guy like Nolly Kip with this thing. How fucking crazy is that? Who's like the real like French street skater? Right? I think Stefan, for me, Stefan was... Like everywhere you go, you see Stefan Laurent skating. He was so good, he could do everything. Like I'm talking like like 12 years ago, 15 years ago, he was always on top of everything. Like I saw him skate here, skate at the dome, skate everywhere, skate the wave. We just skate everything. He was very very good. Stefan was the most famous Parisian skater because I'm not from Paris. I am from the suburbs, and when I was very young, I used to come in Paris and have a one hour train journey to come here and so I was coming to the dome and say oh there's Stefan Laurence we at the dome one of the main spots in Paris it's pretty cool because you can just uh, come uh, no matter the weather or the time there will always be skaters here it's really crazy because it's all marble and it's pretty smooth and open space and people just uh, let us skate There was always a big scene in Paris. And I met one guy that was skater that was skating at the, at the Trocadero. Then we became friends and uh, he took me in a skate with the guy at the Trocadero. Then this is, uh, I just uh, came here like every week. We just came down and they were, actually there was like nothing here, but uh, marble, like uh, pieces of marble everywhere. And we were just looking at the spot from up there and we just uh, thought that they were building a skate spot for us. So when they were building, we were finishing down below, down. this is where you guys skate Yeah, this well. is where we're skating, yeah. The ledge and the stair, we're just going in circle all day. Some of the best uh, skate memories have been here. 
Is there a certain trick that you saw on this ledge that you were like, man, I couldn't believe someone did that? Yeah, uh, flow, uh, nolly crook. Uh, oh! The flow just uh, killed these spots. And yeah, the spot used to be so smooth. It was so good, now it's all cracked everywhere. This, the spot has uh, had too much success. If you come here on the summer times, so many skaters here. Has it ever been a problem skating here? Yeah, there are always problems, but um, every two years or something, they just uh, try to uh, get the skaters out of here. And it just lasts for like a month or two. And then since everybody just come and skate here anyway, they just uh, sort of give up. And so they just let us skate. So this was the big double set? Yeah, pretty big double set. We've been skating this spot for a long time, but not a lot of tricks have been done. Only a few uh, managed to skate it. Because it takes a lot of energy to push, yeah. then to fall, then to go back and to push and to fall. It's even bigger when you try to skate it. It's really big. I spent about uh, 15 million hours here. 94 to, I don't know, 97, 96, we've been here all the time filming. That's where I, I pretty much learned filming. Yeah, this part is the main plaza in Lyon. When they finally finished it in 94, it was like, ah, oh, paradise. When they finished the plaza, that was the turning point where like skateboarding went back to street in Lyon. Watching the first uh, 411s, like there was virtually like all the skateboard community in 411. Each uh, new issue, I was like, oh, I'm sure there's going to be some French guys, and then he never came. And I was like, ah, so maybe I have to do it. Like, I'm filming, maybe I'll just send footage, and maybe they want to use it, and that's what happened. Four known people, like Steve Douglas, he, I, sent, I sent him all the VHS uh, videos from here, and then he was like, oh, yeah, it's really good. We should, we should send stuff for 411, and then and then JB, ooh, it's really good. And the second time I sent the video, like JB had improved a lot. He was skating really well. And then they were like, oh, that's it. Like, we want him on New Deal. So I was like, oh, wow, videos are important. <laughs> so that was the first thing that, that pushed me to keep going. And that we're doing, we were doing it for a purpose, not just for fun, but it was like, uh, helping people, so that was good, that was a good thing. As you can see, it's in really bad condition right now. Uh, I think they redid the place twice, like they completely renewed the ledges, uh, but they, they get fucked up really quick. And then only, only the other ones, they're really strong. What kind of stuff has been done on this thing? I, remember, I mean, again, it seems like everything I see here is from JB, but... Uh, Jeremy was skating this thing uh, in a different way. It's, it's the only one that I know that he all lead from uh, one side to the other, like straight. That's pretty difficult. Yeah, Jeremy is the one who's been doing all the best stuff because there's the crack at the bottom. We used to put cement, so it's smooth, but now, like, People got used to skate it this way, so when you know the local, it's not easy to skate it without the cement. But Jeremy is like, it doesn't matter. When we were like 17, I got interviewed by French TV, and they were saying, yeah, how do you see your future? And I said, yeah, I don't see myself skating in, uh, when I'm uh, 20 years old, and uh, because it's kind of lame or whatever, but uh, I'm 35 and I'm still skating.
Ouais, mais des, ouais. des anciens. Ouais, euh, ouais, ils bossent en fait. C'est pas une prison. Je suis allé pour Flip quand ils sont venus à l'Amérique. And I didn't really want to do it, so I thought uh, the best solution was to start a, um, a Euro company so that can pay riders, so they can stay in Europe. Lots of uh, good riders were riding in Europe and they didn't even getting paid. And if they wanted to get paid, they had to move to America. Nowadays, uh, you can be pro and live in Europe before it was impossible. I was driving back to Scotland with my folks and I bought like a couple of magazines, you know, just for the road back in the car. And I remember, I think it probably was about 96. And I didn't really know anything about French skateboarding at that time. And I was just looking through this French magazine. I was like, fuck, this guy's fucking killing it. And it was uh, Jeremy that was doing a lip slide, front side lip slide down a handrail or something like that. And I think the actual interview in it was, if I remember correctly, he was going on about how he didn't want to move to the States and he was going on about how many like rippers there are in France and you know, like you can still do it here and he was even saying it then. If you ask like the older dudes that like kind of stop skating now, he used to skate back in the day, like all the stories like Jeremy did this, Jeremy did that, you know, like like way back in the day, like the shit he's done is pretty ridiculous. Definitely played a big part in European skateboarding. Spot? Fush, yeah, because there's a, it's the train station stop and uh, yeah, it's where we are at. How far is it from the Hotel de Ville? It's across the bridge from the river. Who's the first person to skate this spot? I think it was me. First I did Oli to roll on it and then 50-50 on it. When's the last time you skated here? Uh, I mean, really skated it uh, a long time ago, but I come here every day to skate the mini ramp because there's also a mini ramp, and every time there's some skaters who are coming to Lyon, they want to see it. Are there any other tricks that you'd like to see go down here? I really want to see a lip slide on it, but it's you need to be goofy foot to do it, and uh, yeah. Is there a <laughs> skater that you have in mind that you yeah. want to do it? There's one, uh, but you'll see it in the next uh, cliche video. <laughs> yeah. We are here in the mini room. Like it's it's our mini room. We built it. Really famous because uh, actually it was the, the first place of the Frère Lumière. They, they start the cinema, you know, the movie. It was here, you know, they, they filmed the door uh, in front of there. People come and squat. They start to build some places and start to do some art, art stuff. And, and then we come and we start to do some skate stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm living here. I build my house here, and we we try to build something, you know, something different. Until the wall fall, we're gonna stay here. <laughs> Welcome to the, to Hugo's place, and Vincent. So yeah, with this guy here, Vincent, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere here they are playing music. But now they built the house six years ago and then after like like one year ago I came here and he said yeah it's possible to build it so I built it you know like <laughs> it's perfect and I have an internet and a kitchen perfect <laughs> Yeah, you can go inside. What's check. inside? Yeah, it's my house. I built all this. There were nothing. 
And then my friend uh, was living here. He told me one night, yeah, maybe it's possible to build uh, something, you know, like it's possible to, to make it. I was like, yeah, check the wood, check the this carpet, you know, like, yeah, there's enough to do something. And every night in six months, I built everything and now I'm living here. It's all the stuff I have in my uh, in my stuff I bring here, you know. So I was like, ch -ch -ch, start to put everything here. Some touch. Uh, it's Et all the stuff I have with me. C'était ta première board, la psychostic? No, that's the board I saw. The first American board I saw in the shop. Vision psychostic. C'était ma première board à moi. In like a sport shop, you know. Like, This is an American skateboard. At the beginning, we just made some T-shirt with a marker, like erase the logo, and on it, like fuck, it's it's our logo, you know, like fuck. We put the logo on the on the other logo, and that's it. Pff, wow, we have a it's a crew, like a lot of skateboarders do that. Ah, it's my crew, so we started like a crew and just make 50 T-shirt and then 100 boards, and the next year it was like wow, we sell it. Pff, okay, maybe we do 200 this year. Pff, we will see. Yeah, the and company wasn't even existing. It wasn't official. We just, you know, put some money. Black it wasn't market. like an official company, so it's all black market and for three did years. These boards, and yeah, just we just wanted to do our own thing, and we, we had all like, I was writing for Consolidated, and he was writing for was it Premium mm. at that point, like True you know, kind of yeah. the European guys on the American brands. You would go show up and uh, skate and. And nobody was around and everybody had their own problems. Or you don't even know why you're going there and stuff. And you're from Europe and then you're just like, well, actually, we can you know, do our little own thing. And it's more fun because it's your thing. That's a good contrast with cliché. For me, I used to come here and skate a lot with the cliché guy because there was the only one who really moved the ass for skate, like move, travel uh, in a van, like cut some fence and skate something. And so we just... But the style was different, so kids were, were like, I don't know, rock and roll, all this. Some kids were, were happy to, to see something different. And from the beginning, it was, yeah, it was just, ah, fuck it, uh, fuck everything, fuck all the company, fuck the consuming stuff. And at the end, we're in the business world, and we try to keep the, the spirit we have the, at the beginning, too. You know. It's a hard choice who to put on the team. How do, you, how do you go about finding No, it's not hard. Um, it, it somehow comes naturally, I guess. You always crash test those guys on a tour, and it fits perfectly, or it doesn't at all, actually. Much more than money, it's like a family. All people get involved in, into, into entities, it's like just friendship. And the thing is, like, we go on the road with the backpack, with the boards, and we just enjoy and try to skate try to uh, have a good time and I think it's the best uh, treasure you can have uh, into skateboarding because that's the roots of skateboarding. I skate for Antis since uh, maybe four years right now and uh, that's really really good because for me it's uh, when I was kids I was dreaming uh, when I saw Hugo and Juju on the magazine. I was a oh, crazy skateboarder. A photograph called me and uh, he just said, hey, you have to come with me, skate a bit in Lyon. And I met uh, this guy and it was really, really fun and good. And they told me, yeah, if you want to skate for uh, aunties. And I was, ah, so good. <laughs> Sorry, you can't go inside. No. What's going on in there? Huh? What's going on inside? Yeah, skating, chilling, enjoying the life. <laughs> à la télé, alors le soir j'ai fait une mini rampe dans le salon. Donc et encore ce soir, il y en a qui vont arriver encore et ça va venir de partout, ça va être trop bien, des copains de partout. Quoi.
pas. Je n'étais jamais venu avant à, à Lyon et je ne connaissais pas vraiment l'équipe euh, lyonnaise. Et donc là, j'ai pu voir un peu comment ça se passait, euh, en l'occurrence en tease. Et, euh, et donc c'était assez incroyable. On était chez, chez, Sam, chez Sam et Juju, apparemment. Ils ont transformé leur salon en, en rampe quoi, donc et en piste de danse pour sa copine. C'était assez sympa, on a, on a passé un bon moment. Et puis, et puis voilà, on s'est bien amusé tous ensemble, mais c'est sympa, j'ai bien aimé. We're in Marseille, Southeast France, the first big ball we got in France. It's famous pretty much uh, because of the of the ball riders contest that uh, Quicksilver organized a few years ago. For us, it's a real uh, historical place compared to what has been done, uh, which legends of skateboarding has skated that spot. The US pros used to come more in Europe because uh, uh, there was uh, still a, a lot of, uh, of World Cups taking place in Europe. So they came along to promote their brands and stuff. And uh, most of the time when they were in France, uh, they were always managing to get two or three or four free days for, for just checking Marseille. So, I mean, there's a list of uh, crazy names, like really good names of skateboarding that have sk skated here. The incredible transfer of John Cardia with the broken board, backside 360. Still the craziest trick that has ever been done in this spot. Omar Hassan is the only one for the moment I've seen uh, doing Mac twist in the, in the big ball. But after that, uh, years after years, uh, the, the local skaters that were also entering the ball riders, they knew how to take the lines and uh, which kind of transfer they can do. It's kind of perfect what, what the people like designed like almost 20 years ago. It's still real skatable. When they did uh, all the metro stuff in Marseille in 1991, all the ground they took out from the town, they used it to make all these beaches you see here before the sea was against the, the street. So they decided to build a Californian way of life seashore. And we had the luck to have uh, Jean-Pierre Collinet, who is the architect of the ball. He was a passionate skateboarder and a 100% skateboarder. And he helped having this. There has always been skating in Marseille, but the ball really connected people. En fait, j'ai skaté le Prado quand j'avais 14 ans, on holidays with my brother. J'étais pas là en fait pour le ball rider où il y avait Tony Trujillo, et John Cardiel, tout ça. J'étais trop jeune, donc euh, je suis venu après. Et moi, ce qui, les gars qui m'ont vraiment fait halluciner ici, c'était euh, Guillaume Moquin. Julien Benoyel, Mehdi Salah. Dans notre ville, il n'y a pas un aussi beau bol. Et en plus, près de la mer, avec la situation dans le sud, avec le, le climat, c'est vrai que c'est bien pratique par rapport au reste de la France. <rire> non Il y a beaucoup de... Je ne sais pas le mot, le mot « racaille <rire> ». Traduire « racaille ».« The gang <rire> ». Ouais, non, c'est sûr. Ah, Mais après, tu t'habitues, tu passes au-dessus de ça, quoi. <rire> ouais. Non, c'est vrai. Moi, je... Là où je travaille, franchement, tu hallucines, quoi. C'est le pire quartier de Marseille. Hein. Ah ouais. C'est à mal passé. C est, c est, c est mal cré... passé, ça s'appelle Ouais, ouais, ouais. <rire> c'est mal passé. <rire> c'est craignos, mais franchement, c'est... La première fois que je suis allé, j'ai flippé. Et après, je me suis dit, ah, ça va, c'est cool, quoi. Where are we going? On va à la caverne, c'est euh, un spot que la sauce de Mehdi et tout ça ont construit. Un gros hangar désaffecté. Et eux, ils ont construit un super beau bol. Et on vient ici, enfin euh, moi, vu que j'habite pas à Marseille, je viens ici de temps en temps prendre du bon temps. Un peu sketchy, mais super, vraiment super. <rire> Thank you.
On a commencé la caverne il y a 4 ans. Et euh, en fait, c'est avec des, des potes skateurs. Ça fait plusieurs années qu'on pense faire ce spot. Et euh, après un voyage en Californie, j'ai euh, skaté Washington Street. Et après, je suis rentré ici. J'ai dit, je veux le même à Marseille. Ça va quoi Ça va, ouais. C'était difficile et ce, ce hangar, on le connaît, il existe depuis 15 ans. On a parti du principe que si on se fait détruire le hangar, ben on en aura profité pendant au moins, pour l'instant ça fait 4 ans, et ça fait 4 ans qu'on profite de la caverne et on espère en profiter encore un maximum de temps. Ben on ne sait pas, autant demain c'est rasé et il y aura des immeubles. Mais pour l'instant on s'éclate comme ça, euh, à venir avec nos potes et, et délirer, à construire le spot, à le skater, voilà. c'est vachement important quand on est on se retrouve dans ces endroits là avec les grands immeubles les un peu les, les banlieues et tout ça où il y a beaucoup de jeunes qui ont vraiment euh, peu de moyens c'est que c'est quelqu'un m'a dit qui va euh, encourager les gens et les jeunes et regrouper les jeunes pour faire du skateboard ça c'est les marseillais Canal Plus et, euh, et en même temps, en parallèle, euh, il va aussi construire des endroits euh, underground, pirates, comme la caverne là-bas, qui, euh, qui sont des endroits incroyables pour les, les vrais skateurs et tout. C'est pas évident à Marseille de, de faire bouger cette scène parce que les jeunes euh, font du skateboard un an et après ils partent. Euh, donc euh, lui arrive à les garder et à les motiver quelques-uns, une bonne équipe pour euh, avoir de vrais skateurs au final, des gens qui aiment ça et qui, qui le font pour leur plaisir euh, jusqu'à la fin de leur vie.